Hi, I'm Joy Lawrence. Welcome to my MLA citations video. In this video, I will cover the nine core elements to consider when building citations for MLA works cited pages. I'll also provide you with examples to show you how to plug that information in to build those citations. Hang on for a wild ride. I do recognize that going over works cited information can be boring, so I will do my best and try to keep your attention. The Works Cited page is the last page of the essay and contains a full citation for each of the sources used in the essay. The sources need to be listed in alphabetical order and include a hanging indent. A hanging indent is when you don't indent the first line of a citation, but you do indent all additional lines of a citation. MLA has tried to streamline the citation process by creating nine core elements. First is the author, the person who created the source. Second is the title of the source itself. Third is the title of the container. That's where that source is housed. For example, a song title is the title of the source and the song lives in an album, so the album is the container. Fourth is other contributors. If there are others who contributed to the project, you'd include them there. Fifth is the version. Maybe you're using the third edition of a textbook, for example. Sixth is the number, like if it's a part of a series. Seventh is the publisher, whoever created the actual publication, like a record company for the album. Eighth is the publication date. Publication dates, if you have everything, if you have the day, month, year, then they do go day, month, year in that order. Finally, you have the location of where you can find that source. Let's use Maria and Hosa's book to see what information we can plug into the core elements. Notice we don't have information for every category, and that's okay. You're only responsible for the information that is out there for you to gather. Here's how a citation for Hannah Hosa's book would look. You have her last name, comma, first name, period. Then you have the title of her book in italics, followed by a period. Then the name of the publisher, followed by a comma. Then the year, followed by a period. And MLA format does care about the punctuation, so you'll want to pay attention to that. Again, you don't indent the first line of the source, but you do indent all other lines of that citation. While I have you here with this citation, let me take a minute to explain how citations on the Works Cited page connect with the parenthetical in-text citations. Say, for example, I wanted to quote Hinojosa's book, and I have this in my essay. Spring was beginning to say, what's up, with tiny little buds sprouting like green beans on the branches of trees and yellow chirping chickadees excited about the full bird feeders. As a side note, first, that what's up is a great example of an onomatopoeia. Okay, back to the citation. After I've ended that quote, then I have a parenthetical in-text citation that includes the last name of the author, and the page number where I can go to find that quote in the book. Notice that the period comes after the parenthetical citation. As a reader, I should then be able to go to the Works Cited page and find a citation that starts with Hinojosa so that I can find all of the information I need to go get that book if I want to. Now, what should you do if there is no author or editor or translator, etc.? In that case, use the title in place of the author for both the in-text citation and the works cited citation. Things get a little trickier when you have two or more authors. With two authors, you still list the author's name as last name, comma, first name, but then it's a comma instead of a period. And then the second author's name is, is written just regular, first and last name. You have an and, and then that author's name. You put the authors in order of how they appear on the book. So since Lisa Letts' name comes first on the book, she's first on our citation. What if you have three or more authors? You write the first author's name as last name, comma, first name, comma. Then you put this phrase ET period AL period, which means and others. Again, the first author on the source is the one whose name goes on the citation first. What if you don't have an author, but you have an editor or a translator? 
You follow the same conventions you would for a single author, two authors, or three or more authors. The names still come first in the citation, and you follow that last name, comma, first name order, but you want to also add an identifier so your readers know this is an editor, translator, etc. For example, the world of ideas has an editor, so you'd list his name as Jacobus, comma, Lee, A, period, comma. If a writer or an editor does include their initial, then you include it too. And then you put editor. If you have two editors, you list the last name, comma, first name of the first editor that's listed on the book. And then you write out the second name as you normally would. You put a comma and you put editors. Now something else that can be tricky is knowing when to put a title in quotes and when to put it in italics. Here's a list of titles that go in quotation marks versus titles that are put in italics. One way to think about this is italics are for things that house the things in quotes. So for example, a collection of poems would be the house where poems live. So that house is put in italics and the poems would be put in quotation marks. Same thing with an album. An album is the house where songs live. So the album would be italicized and the songs would be put in quotes. It's a trick that I use to remember what goes in quotation marks and what goes in italics, and I hope it works for you too. All right, hopefully you're starting to see how information gets plugged in. Now I'm gonna plug in some information from a TV show to give you another example of how to use these core elements. Hold on. It's about to get very exciting. Let's do a citation for an episode of Stranger Things. The author of the show is going to be, in this case, the person who wrote the script. There are different writers for different episodes, so we want the one for the episode we're citing. His name is Justin Doble, and remember that author names go last name, comma, first name, period. Next comes the title of the source, and that's where we'll put the name of this episode, which is Chapter 3, The Polywog, and this title will go in quotation marks. Then we put the title of the container, the container, which is Stranger Things, and that goes in italics. You might not always put something for other contributors. In this case, we might be talking about the specifics of a scene and want to reference the director. In that case, we'd include him, Sean Levy, under Other Contributors and make note that he's the director. Other contributors might include an actor's name if you're talking about their performance, the makeup artist if you're highlighting a character's makeup, etc. We don't have a version for this source, so we'll leave that blank. If you were using a book that has more than one edition, the version is where you'd put that information. Next comes the number. This is where we'll put the season and the episode number. The publisher is the next piece of information needed, and that's going to be the creator of Stranger Things, which is Netflix, and Netflix is italicized. The publication date will be the date when it originally aired. This episode aired on the 27th of October, 2017. Remember the format for dates in MLA format is day, month, year, without a comma after the month or the day. You also want to abbreviate the long months to the first three letters followed by a period when you include dates in the citations. Finally, we need to provide the location where readers can find this source, and that location is www.netflix.com. Now we have all the information we need to build our citation, our citation. Let's take a look at how that should look. Here you re remember you have the first line is not indented but you do have that hanging indent where all the other lines of that citation are indented. All of the information that we have in our core elements has been plugged into our citation. Don't forget about the resources you have available to you to help you build citations. We have excellent librarians in the Porterville College Library who can help you with citations and with gathering sources that already have the cita citations built in. The Learning Resource Center, is where you can find tutors and mentors to help you with building citations too. You can also get information from Purdue's online writing lab, which has extensive information about MLA format. That's it for MLA citations on the Works Cited page. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of how to build those citations. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.